Good day learners, this is Easy Engineering. For today's topic, we're going to talk about the freshwater ecosystem. Fishing. Who does it like fishing? The peaceful environment and the excitement of hooking a fish. But while you're waiting, you can see other things. The flowing water in the river, the chirping of the insects, and the interaction of small animals. And these are the things we see in a freshwater ecosystem. Freshwater ecosystems include streams, rivers, lakes, and ponds that have water and are surrounded by land. So the ocean doesn't count, and for another reason, it's very salty and not a touch of freshness at all. These waters move as rain comes and snow dries up. With melting snow, lakes and rivers are supplied. You may notice that when snow dries up, it becomes water and in this case a fresh water. Now let's talk about streams and rivers. The water in streams and the rivers are always moving. That's why it oftentimes called low tech. Sometimes the rain from the mountains are carried by rivers to the sea and with its flow is lots of minerals and fresh filtered waters by the rocks. There are many rivers that are considered major rivers in the world. And talking about rivers, did you know that the largest river in the world is the Nile River in Egypt? By largest, meaning the longest, of course. But if we're talking about the largest volume, then it would be the Amazon River, where some monster fishes are found. So let's talk about lakes and ponds. Lakes and ponds are sometimes called Atlantic because they have waters that stand still or not flowing. A pond may just be a very small lake but a lot of animals live there, mostly for the grasses that grow below and the comfort. And there are four different types of lake zones. First is the littoral zone. It is the area that is close to the shore of the lake and this is where the plants grow. Its opposite is the limnetic zone, where it is far from the shore. The euphotic zone is the layer of water right below the surface. That means it's below the ground we're stepping on. But there is still enough sunlight to reach this area for some photosynthesis to happen. And lastly, the benthic zone. It is the bottom of the lake or pond. The deeper part of the lake, the cooler part, since the sunshine that warms the water is less in the deep. Fun fact learners, did you know that the largest lake that covers the land is the Caspian Sea? Yes, you heard it right, sea, but technically it is a lake since it is surrounded by land, and it is salty too. Nevertheless, it is as big as a sea, that's why it's called Caspian Sea. Now let's go to the plants and animals of the fresh water. Plants and algae are very important to fresh water because they provide food for the other animals and give off oxygen. In fact, that green and slimy scum or layer of dirt you can find on the surface of a pond or lake is freshwater algae and is the yummy food for some aquatic animals. In fast flowing streams and rivers, the freshwater weeds and other plants have unique structures that keep them holding on to overcome the very strong water. Specifically, they have strong roots that keep them secure, like some mosses that cling to rocks tightly and stems that bend easily and go with the flow of the water. On the other hand, plants in still water, like ponds, just chill and stay still. These are the water lilies, algae, and duckweed that float on the surface. Cattails and reeds can also be found along the shore of the lakes or ponds. Estuaries are home to plants that survive in the fresh waters as well as the salt water. Some of these plants are the mangroves and pickleweed. Fun fact learners, did you know that the largest water lily in the world is the Victoria Amazonica. It looks like a very large plate and sometimes frogs just hop on it to chill. 
by its name it's found in the Amazon River. Speaking of frogs, they are freshwater animals and cannot survive long on salt water. Many animals live in freshwater ecosystems. Like plants, they adapt too to survive the moving waters. Some may have suction cup-like structures on their bodies just to stick to rocks. There are lots of fishes, birds, insects, amphibians, and crustaceans that make freshwater biomes their home. One example is the trout, and we love to fish for them, and they become meals for other animals as well. Fishes like trout and salmons eat insects and plants that go their way. Salmons often just jump out of the water for migration, and bears just love catching them. Estuaries are also rich in animal life and are often a protected area for some creatures. Some animals like clams, shrimp, and lots of fish also live here. So learners, that's all of it for this topic, freshwater ecosystem. That is all for now. I hope you learned something today. Have a nice day.